welcome back uh sorry about yesterday we had a little audio snafu um as in my dialogue did not get recorded at all yesterday so we did a whole show i had a lot of call outs and eh, you know realistically they they didn't um quite take off yet anyway so i guess kind of a blessing in disguise and then um we also have an opportunity to just kind of review what we did last week and uh man we nailed a hundred percent accuracy from last week's video which is I, I'm floored. I've never known any analyst that could do that. So, have you? <laughs> no, I have not, except for us and except for taking the opposite side of Jim, but no. Heck yeah, man. That's pretty pretty impressive, I got to say. I'm, I'm going to injure myself, pat myself on the back. I get lots of kudos, to, kudos today, and so do you. Um, and then we're kind of joking around. Maybe we should just start a, a counter uh, counter Kramer club. We'll call it the, uh, the investment club that counters Kramer. <laughs> For what he charges, I think we would be doing a much better service because from what I understand, I think so too. he doesn't give diddly squat for technical analysis, and that's that's what we live on. I mean, that's been yeah. paying my bills for a long time now. So um, getting into the mix of stuff, I've got Spy up here. We've been kind of scalping around a little bit this morning, uh, waiting to see if it's going to break this range. If it can get outside of that, uh, you know, uh, 475, 476 area, we could see an outside move to 478, but it's kind of looking like it's just eating theta today more than anything yeah it lo looks pretty heavy um you know we'll we'll, we'll see typical friday and then you know tr uh, i guess historically this was the santa rally day that we'd normally get traditionally but uh not happening today it doesn't seem to be really cooking off either direction just sideways um yeah i think santa came a little early this year yeah that's why Absolutely. I mean, we got that bar over here on the uh, 13th that just was screaming. That's it. <laughs> uh, and then the other day we had that nice, nasty sell off. That was a beautiful short, I must say. And now we're just kind of cruising in a range. So perhaps next week we might give some of this back. I mean, if we crunch this uh, level at about 470, we could see retracement of 463, 462 two somewhere around there maybe eat this candle and come for consolidation i'd love to see that actually because that would be a little bit more natural than this parabolic craziness we've been having so hard to hard to judge the market just before the end of the year but i mean you know when you, you weigh everything into it like you got people loss harvesting and all that happy stuff it kind of uh kind of lines up for maybe having a little bit of a bearish trend next week just to pull back and kind of balance everything but that's yeah, hard to say well We'll pick it by ear and maybe pick into it next week and see what we get. But uh, for now, man, I'm going to go down the list. I, I wrote it down on the back of an envelope here to note that we did really good with our call-outs last week. And I dropped it on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> so let's dig into that. Um, we started with, uh, I think I started with Snapchat. And that was um, not necessarily on Jim Cramer's list, but it was one that uh, we called out very well. It was just mainly staying in range and uh, called the range out very well. It did give us all the moves we thought it would. And if you look back to the 14th here, um, I was stating these ranges on the 14th. I was looking at that candle wick and that candle wick. And then more or less, it did step out a little bit, but mostly it's back in that range. And uh, if this thing continues to consolidate here, it's either going to make or break this thing. But that's been one hell of a rally. Um, look left even further, and I got that. You know, that weekly candle just kind of uh, tantalizing my, my spidey sense to go long here. But <laughs> I'm kind of sitting on my hands at this point. I've got a position on. I've got, well, a position on in three different accounts and, uh, you know, three different strategies. And they're all working out great. But right about here, I think um, I might just go and probably look to take a little risk off this thing. Maybe uh, shore it up with some short options legs or something like that. I might. I consider running that in all of my uh, portfolios. But uh, if this thing gets loose, I mean, you break that $17 mark, dude, it'll eat this candle at least half down to, up to about 20 and maybe an outside move to 23, 25 is in order. Um, it certainly wants it, but uh, fundamentally, I mean, Snapchat, eh, you know, does it really get that much revenue? Um, okay, it, it, they just... Uh, announce that they're going to start charging for certain things so maybe they'll generate a little bit maybe it'll be a return to mean if that thing gets nuts and starts to really become successful uh, we could see a run to 36 that's a good good number for half of the previous nasty bear trend that it's been through you know um 
Would I throw it in SGM? Eh, not yet. <laughs> yeah, no, we, 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 we don't have that one. Maybe we'll throw it in the counter, the counter Kramer club. <laughs> counter Kramer club, I like it. That's a great day. I just kind of spot thought of that. Just came to me. Um, you know, we could actually do well with that. We could just uh, we could just say, all right, well, we'll just do an analysis page. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, I like the idea. Um, and then uh, the other one, I got pretty wordy on this one last week, and and everybody kind of glazed over on this, but that uh, that Kmax company, K A M N, Kamen company. Sorry. Yeah, that was one. Again, I don't know much about that one, but you seem to. I was knowledgeable because I've been on the other side of the fence at the airport, kind of up close with those helicopters. They're really neat. I love them. Um, and that's the, the primary thing. Um, we were looking for a pullback uh, when we were talking about this on Thursday, and we got exactly that. Only now it's looking a lot like a bull flag, only this high wave is a little concerning today on, on the uh, two-hour chart. Um, if it can't quite break out of that twenty-four, you know, thirty dollar or twenty-four dollar and thirty range, eh, it may just consolidate a little bit longer. But you know, it's met its target for a really nice two-for-one move, more or less. And then looking left, uh, if this thing breaks out of this range, it could it could really run to that uh, thirty-two eighty mark and eat that entire bear bar here. Um, just something to keep an eye on. I mean, we were we were. I call this a technical correct because we were saying, okay, it's looking like it wants to pull back here, and it sure did. Um, but now it's consolidating. I might be inclined to say this could be a good long-term haul if it can break above half of this bar, and it's just sitting there waiting for it. So, you know, give this thing a week or two. It might uh, might just cook off. We'll have to wait and see. I'm still fairly neutral on it until I see this break, and if this becomes a primary um, it kind of puts us in line with an outside move a little higher. We could say uh, stack it up here and maybe meet most of that candle and get to like 30 bucks. So we'll keep this one in mind. I'll keep my dope on the chart and we'll, we'll revisit it in a couple weeks and see where we're at. But for now, we did get our pullback. We were pretty accurate about that. Didn't quite make it all the way to the base between the two moves, but you know what? It's good enough for a pullback. So I'll call that a technical win. Uh, All right. The uh, the other company we looked at that was also on the um, Kramer's uh, uh, oh, the, not Mad Money but the uh, Lightning Round um, AVAV was the ticker, and we looked in on that one, and we were thinking uh, that was going to come down a little bit, and boy did it! <laughs> I mean. <laughs> You know, it gave us the move we were expecting. Uh, the next day, in fact, it ran right down to the middle of the range where I was expecting to go. I didn't dope the chart very well on this one because we weren't too interested in trading it. But now uh, it's kind of bouncing around in this range. And again, it's kind of one of those companies where we don't really like to trade this, but it might get interesting sooner or later. And, you know, looking at the weekly, uh, it's done a pretty nice job pulling back to a key level, and, and maybe we got a good chance at, at actually finding a trend out of this thing to continue, but just be cautious with this. This thing looks pretty damn jumpy and a, a little bit unpredictable. <laughs> um, you know, like, uh, we, we like to trade charts that are a little more easy to read and, and find yeah. good price targets on, so I probably won't trade it. Um, I, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't either, but... Um, yeah. Looking for an outside move. If it does break that 130 area, we could see a couple dollars up, uh, you know, to split this uh, maneuver here. But we were dead on with the, it's looking like it wants to pull back, and it sure did. I think this is uh, one that uh, Jimbo was a little bit bull uh, bullish on, so kudos to us. We did it. <laughs> and uh, the next one, uh, GEHC, that was a GE Healthcare. That was a, Yeah, he's always like that one. That was a no-brainer. Um, let's see. We said we were looking for a sideways move on this thing for consolidation. And let's see. Let me look back to the 14th here. Um, from there, it did give us a sideways move, pulled back a little low, and then came right back to where we are now. But now we're starting to look at that trend. And we were pretty much neutral on this until we decided if it was going to break this key pivot and there it went 
So we were lukewarm as far as maybe getting into a, a continuation maneuver from this thing, but we were certainly looking at this trend being damn just vertical parabolic. Um, we did get inside on the next day. We got that nice pullback, and it went just about to my target. So another another technical win, but now we consolidated and bounced out. So, okay, we, we were stating neutral, pullback, and then maybe continuation. And it's done all three in order. So I, I call that another technical win. So there's all on right. par. We did really good on that one. Um, RDNT, we revisited. And um, it did pretty much everything we nailed. Um, you know, given this whole trend, we uh, called out that it was likely to pull back here. And um, certainly on the 14th, the next day, it just ran and ate that entire candle from the 13th. And this is one that uh, I think Kramer was saying uh, the week before that he was walking away from it. And it made that outside move one for one. Now it's consolidated right to half the block. So... Um, this thing we could see give us a little bit of consolidation here. We might see a little bit more of a move, but when you see this on the weekly, let this finish. If this closes a nice evening star here, it can finish pulling back to the mean back here at 30, 32 bucks. So definitely a good call on this one and pretty much nailed first target about half the, half the trend here is what we're talking about. and It did it. So this one was solid. And I think this is becoming an interesting chart for trading because if this gets outside, I mean, we got a hell of a lot of upside here. So um, just keep an eye on it. Make sure this consolidation follows through. Get a good bull flag or something and then just apply the old 60-40 rule and see if it breaks out. So keep that on the watch. But uh, we nailed the, the call out on that one. Uh, CVNA. That was pretty awesome. We were uh, noticing that um, Kramer was saying uh, he was done with this one. He's um, really, I mean, historically, but lately as well, really down on, you know, all of these squeeze stocks. So, you know, S Jim's been kicking ass the past, you know, two weeks or so because we've been, you know, short Mag 7 and friends and long you know, all the stocks like this. So, you know, thank you, Jim, for that. Heck yeah. And, um, you know, we, uh, the, one of the other ones we looked at, it was FSLR. We'll get to that later. And that's, that was a clean call. Yeah. Too. He's also been negative on the, uh, on the solars, which has been perfect. I think he pretty much called the bottom on those. But we were, we were stating that this one has potential to become a meme stock. And, uh, you know, the people at Reddit take over, <laughs> it's going to 133, 134 pretty easy. Um, got the classic weekly chart here. We got, you know, your, your old head and shoulders, you got inverse head and shoulders, left head, right. It pulled back exactly as to plan. And now it's just clean price action. So, um, I'm looking for this thing. If it breaks that 58 target, we could see it, uh, bull and run higher. But, um, around the time, uh, we were talking about it last week, we drew this and, um, this was the 14th here. Um, stated that it was likely to at least complete this move. And if I drag that box over, yeah, we made it and then some. So we were bullish. We were right. <laughs> Again, I'll try not to injure myself, pat myself on the back, but that was a good one. Good kudos for that one. Um, sorry, Jim. You... Yeah, I mean, yeah, also you could throw in a firm, upstart, um, you know, a whole bunch of them. He's, oh. Yeah, I mean, there are a whole bunch of those lemonade that, <laughs> that he came out negative on that have really been cranking for us. He gave us lemons, we made lemonade. Yep. And uh, we didn't drink the Kool-Aid. We went for the good stuff. 100% <laughs> fresh juice. And um, yeah, we, uh, we, we stay healthy with that, especially our portfolios. Uh, the next one he said, uh, what was it? Um, Cigna, that thing. Yeah. <laughs> He was uh, looking to be pretty much done with this one. And we were saying, well, let's go neutral on this one because it was looking like consolidation was taking shape. And here we have what's starting to resemble a little bull flag action here. So um, pretty much on par with that call. And that's one hell of a gap up move 
okay. Uh, we gave him the kudo of being long on this thing a little bit before, and it, it did its thing, but now it pulled back as soon as he said anything about it, of course, the day after. Um, and we're, we're plotting and scheming here and going, huh, that chart actually starts to look interesting. It's not one we wanted to trade, but, um, you know, it might start falling into a, a trend here. So uh, thinking kind of um, watch this move as a primary. And if this thing gets really, really crazy, it could return to that previous high. Just wait for this range to break. And, you know, that's an unmistakable consolidation pattern, and it could definitely go higher. But uh, you're going to watch a couple key levels. Um, actually, I'm going to draw this with a liquidity line instead. You know, when you see these wicks, mark them, because that is where the sellers will be. And if we outside this move here, we could easily stretch this into a trend. But uh, if it doesn't break that that uh, consolidation area, um, certainly stay clear of this because it can it can give you fits if you're trying to go long on this. Anytime you see any kind of consolidation and it starts to resemble a bull flag, apply that 60-40 rule. It's got a 60% chance of follow through, 40% chance of failure. And uh, let's mark the outside move real quick here. Oops. Give it the primary. Whoop. Drawing tool went away. Primary. I'm going to come to the mean, not the not the upper zone here. I always draw these kind of in the middle of consolidation ish. And let's see, the outside move should do something like this if it breaks that resistance level. So again, we're we're a bit neutral on this until it breaks out. But um, yeah, if it starts to run, we got 335 on on deck. 334.50 would be a good target for taking profit or reducing risk. But look at this on a daily. That is saying this gap could double. Um, pretty lofty call out, if you ask me. I would say maybe just wait for this uh, range to break and give you a good clue. Above here, cool. Go long. If it doesn't break that, I would say maybe a good short and run half of this uh, half of this big gap back down to the uh, the 50 MA. And maybe give us about 276. So. Still neutral on this until it breaks out of this range, but uh, for the most part, as a technical win, nailed that one. Um, the next one, FSLR. Let's let's get the uh, the cracking out here. This is one Jim said, get the hell away from it. Um, run, take your profit, go away. <laughs> 14th, we were bullish as hell, and uh, we were right. Um, it nailed that key pivot here at 175, like a champ, and cleanly printed a wick in that in that zone. Now we've got some liquidity. There will be sellers here. It's about half that previous trend. Um, kind of saw that one coming. And sure, if it breaks down, it can go and eat half this trend. Absolutely. But uh, for all intents and purposes, we nailed it. There's one more piece to this puzzle yeah, he's also i mean end phase and i think it's solar edge he was negative on too so uh again i mean that that's been great for us too in estrum and as you were outlining um you know with the the uh perspective of uh you know reduced borrowing rates these companies have to borrow a lot um you know these are the companies that are going to actually benefit from a reduced interest rates so that's kind yeah, of I'm all the uh, so all the clean energy, you know, we're hoping that these all set up is is great shorts next year when we have our go woke, go broke ETF out. Absolutely. And um, I, I'm not going to draw the whole thing, but that certainly looks like a diamond top. So this is um, looking like it'll either give us the, the bull flag 60 40 rule and break out to the upside or if it can't break this this key uh, resistance level at 175 with some force, uh, this could easily go and be a great short end of the first of the year. And, uh, you know, 150 target's pretty reasonable for that. So definitely keep eyes on this one from here on out. But um, for the bull trade, going against Kramer, uh, we win. <laughs> so yeah, we killed that one. And then uh, Nike, this is the, the one we were really happy about. And uh, S. Jim shorted it. And uh, S. Jim was right, because that was one hell of a short. Look at that thing. My God. <laughs> right down to the split. How do we call that one out? I mean, that's a let's break our arms on that one, man. That's a great call. And uh, I know S. Jim is, uh, are you still in, in short on that with S. Jim, or did you take some profit off on that one? Which one is it? Sorry. Oh, Nike. 
No, uh, we're going to sell that today. So yeah, Nike was a great call. We're going to cover that today. Good idea, because that's right where it's going to be for support. Yeah, we did, so. we did the same thing with FedEx. We took the massive gain and then, you know, then walked away. Heck yeah, and that absolutely killed it. I mean, we were a little skeptical on whether this range was going to break down or not, but I was um, pretty much, I wasn't, I would never pound the table, but I was like, man, this is screaming. I want to pull back, and there it went. Mm-hmm. Earnings call, nailed it, crushed it right to target, and then some easy trade. And, um, yeah, I, I, I went and ran a little bit of a short on that myself and did very well with it. So kudos yeah, to I us. I can't wait for next earnings season. Me neither, man. Q4, uh, Q4 earnings week is going to be an absolute blast to trade. <laughs> We're going to do very well in the first quarter. I can already see that writing on the wall. Um, the last one we were looking at for our 100% accuracy accuracy run is uh, the little pullback on Ford we were calling out. It uh, definitely did pull back right after we said it did exactly what we thought. Just a little bit under that $12 mark. I was saying maybe, you know, it'll pull back once it hits twelve twenty, and it sure sure did. And uh, right back down to support, kind of consolidated. And now we're looking for maybe a little bit of continuation in this trend. And it might actually hit the $13 mark. I was looking at uh, puts here, and then I went ahead and converted that to a strangle and sold uh, short puts against my long puts here. And now I'm just looking for, I might just sell uh, short calls against my long calls here and, and run that because it's right at resistance. Unless it can get the 13 bucks, 12.50 is kind of the mark at peak previous consolidation in this whole move. So perfect call on that one as well. Um, can't stress how easy the price action is on forward. It is such an easy trading stock and it's my favorite uh, teaching compound for options trades and uh, that is just hands down textbook um, again more kudos we we tend to uh, wear out our elbows doing that and then uh, what was the last one we want to talk about oh you know what let's have a look at us Jim real quick we uh, we went ex dividend yesterday so depending on whether your chart handles that sweet um you may look at, oh yeah you're, you're yeah dollar 34 a you, share what, 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 what time frame is that uh it's called it on the 21st for x date yeah yeah i'm just wondering did it does it automatically adjust uh it just gives me a little little indication that there was a dividend x day here yeah no it looks like, yeah it looks um looks fine actually and then price price adjustment. I mean, you look at um, you know about a buck thirty four. Typically, yeah, yeah, just you know, not everything adjusts. I use Bloomberg quotes, and ah. you know, it was annoying seeing it down five percent yesterday, and when we were actually up like you know forty bips or something. Right. It's just you know people uh, if if they went in and scalped the dividend, they they tend to do that. It just gets adjusted real quick, and yeah, now we're um, right back yeah, to par. It's just annoying. I mean, not every quote system and chart system deals with it so you get people asking why were you down five percent yesterday we weren't we were actually up there we go yeah i mean it was a a great move up and um in in the long run um until volume really kicks into sgm which it's it's starting to swing a little more volume day by day um i've been watching and in the event where i start seeing you know hard to track candles I just go and switch to the Heikinashi candles, and man, things just light up. So now it looks a little more Christmassy, right? Um, right back to target. I mean, we're right in the zone for we could break out here, and I like to mark liquidity. Now I've got enough data on this thing. It's been around long enough to where we can start looking at price targets. Yeah, that's right. I can sit here with the dude who made the ETF and call out price targets on his own ETF. <laughs> I love that. Oh, man. That warms my heart right there. Sorry. I got to say, I never thought I'd be here. <laughs> but, uh, you know, looking at this, paying a dividend even, um, yeah, I'm in. You know, uh, this is uh, one of those stocks I'd love to kind of trade and not just trade, but sell options on when the volume's there and scalp a dividend while I'm at it. Why not? It's paying the bills. Um, I'm, I'm still kind of putting together my list of uh, Div- dividend stocks have been beaten down and are getting into um, rotation in their sector. 
uh, one I was talking about um, last week. I think I mentioned it, but I didn't check the chart. Let me go pull this up here. It is the one on my top top of my list for rotation, and it pays a pretty handsome dividend. Was um, OCCI, and hey, I don't know that one. It's it's kind of um, they're they're a strange lending company, but they they make pretty good uh, dividends outright, and. Um, Back in history, they had a monthly dividend that they paid. Um, not optionable, obviously, but uh, it's one of those stocks where I like to, love to look at rotation. But you know, back when they were paying a monthly dividend, it was like 17 cents a month, which is pretty good yield for a uh, uh, stock trading around six to eight bucks. Um, and then recently, they went into a quarterly dividend where they were paying like 55 cents a share in a quarter, which is pretty decent. And then they just called out their uh, their supplementary dividend. Um, came out on the 21st year yesterday and it's 20 cents a share there and then the perspective is they may go into monthly dividends again after this point and that was quite a nice little reversal on a chart here um, heck I could even put that with regular candles and you can see it a little better even nice little inverse head and shoulders kind of swinging up um, you got the adjusted dividend right here today but it's right back to the mean um, you know, I'm I'm kind of kicking into this one for long-term investment stuff. This is one of my one of my portfolio favorites, but it's a uh, one of about a list of ten stocks that are just like this that have pretty decent dividend yield. Technical analysis says they're likely to rotate, and um, you know, looking at the history, we're kind of at a a weekly low point reached and it kind of bounced off. So I'm looking for you know just a swing for maybe holding this thing through the end of the year to about eight bucks or so it's not a huge dollar game but i'm looking at just sitting and riding a dividend and that's a pretty good percentage for dividends no bank's going to pay you that kind of thing in interest rates so looking good um i'll get that list out uh, i'm going to try to get that all done uh before the end of the year so we can take advantage of everyone else's loss harvesting so <laughs> that's kind of the way we roll um but yeah i think um i mean if if uh if we were to start, I mean, looking at kind of um, the, the counter Kramer club, uh, the emailer that you put out every every day is it, or two two three times a week sometimes. Um, I seems, put it out every day. Is it every day? Okay, I've been kind of yep, checking every, my emails. And... Every day at four oh one, we go through what his buy buy buys and sell sell sells were from the uh, the previous day and say if we did anything in in s gym uh you know what we added what we subtracted that type of deal so that's that's kind of like the free version of the counter kramer club <laughs> i like it i kind of is i mean we don't give you a portfolio no the, just... uh, but then again we have a portfolio we have s gym so we don't need to give you a portfolio right so you could but... you could Use that as kind of a litmus for your portfolio balancing if you wanted right. to I mean, counter you're not gems. taking all of his buy, buy, buys and sell, sell, sells. Right. We, you know, when we started the ETF, the goal was to take everything and realize very quickly that's just way too unwieldy. There, there are too many names. Yeah, it's a lot to handle, you know. I mean, even even on our part, I mean, we've got, what, 10 stocks that we whipped through. Well, and, and, and the problem is you couldn't... You know, you couldn't hold on to uh, much for very long. I mean, we could handle it, but, you know, then you're getting rid of names every week, week and a half. And, you know, there are certain names you just, you know, you don't want to get rid of. Right. Well, there's, there's you some. You don't want 600 stocks in your portfolio <laughs> either. True. Very true. That's that's a way too many eggs in the basket there and different baskets, too. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, it's it's kind of a kind of a great thing to get on. You know, um, hit us up in the comments and stuff as as far as uh, what you'd like to see. But um, definitely check out that emailer because it's, it's worthy. Um, you get a lot of great information on it, and it, if you apply a little technical analysis to all of those stocks that are listed in that daily, um, you know, you'll find some pretty damn good swing trades out of it which is kind of what we're doing here you know we're, we're literally picking through a, the, the litter of all of jim kramer's call outs and finding the nuggets of gold and that's what we stick to and uh you know to have last week be a hundred percent accurate that that is thrilling that's not just um great that's amazing uh weeks prior we were hovering around 90 to 94 percent accuracy which is pretty damn good too um 
I guess we could just call ourselves uh, technical analysts. You know, we could be a, that kind of litmus right. in the market. Maybe we just start an, uh, an uh, analyst firm here. <laughs> Who knows? There's limitless opportunities out there. And, uh, you know, I think uh, if we can kind of keep, keep making these calls and keep uh, doing right by the people, you know, that's our aim. So if, if you like yeah. us, throw us a throw us a bone in the comments and tell us what you think. You know, let us know if you want us to take this even further and go into some other uh, probability or possibilities here. So. Well, again, thanks for joining us. Um, I know it's about uh, lunchtime in the market, and we're looking to eat lunch before the market eats it for us. And uh, I'll take one <laughs> quick look at SPY again and say, hey, man, look, it's kind of kind of pushing back up to that limit zone. If it breaks this range, cool, we could go for a Santa rally. But if not, it's likely to just eat theta for the rest of the day. Yeah, yeah I, I can't imagine we do a whole heck of a lot here with nah. uh you know, the the later we get without something. Yeah. There's no no catalyst, no news today. It's just kind of flat and you know. Well, I mean we did have PCE this morning, uh, which was a little bit cool. Um, you know, I I I put out a post on Twitter that I thought volatility would crater. Yeah. It hasn't. It's oh wait. actually, uh well, volatility is selling off as we speak. So I was right pre-market, then the market opened, volatility went up. Now volatility looks like it wants to go red. Let's go. All right. Just return to mean, you know, probably around uh, 473.50 ish for a spy push back down to the middle of, well, news gap up, news return to middle. Pretty simple. Stay within the mean. And, uh, you know, if, if you're trading both sides of it, sure, you could uh, you could run and sell some options in that kind of action. You know, sell the calls here, sell the puts down here, and bought a bank. Stay in the range. But anyway, been a great week. Um, had an awesome time. And uh, yeah, man, next week back to the Thursday schedule. And um, from there, we're, we're looking at doing a review video maybe once a week if we can. And, um, you know, push that out maybe uh, Tuesdays or something like that. We'll, we'll figure it out if we get time. And certainly we like to respect people's time and keep it as short as we can without, you know, going overboard on stuff. And... We definitely appreciate y'all support and uh, yeah, tell some friends because uh, we're, we're doing some things. And if you like us in the comments and, and give us some, some good feedback on what we're doing, we'll, we'll keep doing it and we'll keep doing it more and more and better. So thanks again. We will. We'll see you guys around. Thanks for joining us.